The world's deadliest terrorist group. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. The CIA just casually discussed sinking a boat full of Cuban refugees and planting bombs in Miami and blaming Castro. But you're batshit crazy if you suspect such agencies may have had similar discussions about other geostrategic situations and decided to go through with it. There's more public criticism of ordinary people taking ivermectin than there is of planet-dominating power structures driving humanity to Armageddon. Nobody who supports internet censorship does so because they're worried they themselves might consume dangerous words and believe them. It's always to protect other people from dangerous words. It's about the most megalomaniacal, emotionally stunted desire someone could possibly have. They see themselves as responsible adults who can be trusted to independently sort out truth from falsehood, but see other people as infants who cannot be trusted to do this. This is nothing other than garden-variety narcissism. Internet censorship via monopolistic government-tied tech corporations isn't just a problem because of free speech issues. It's a problem because the way it's applied is completely uneven and power-serving. Politicians and mass media circulate disinformation constantly without ever being censored. It's not just silencing people, it's actually shifting power upward. There is no path forward for humanity on this planet without complete female reproductive sovereignty. No, Texas conservatives aren't like the Taliban. No, U.S. government authoritarianism isn't like China or North Korea. You know what it's like? America. It says so much that the most corrupt and destructive nation on earth keeps comparing its homegrown depravity to foreign nations. Imagine if the world's deadliest terror group got their hands on drones and cruise missiles and nuclear warheads and aircraft carriers and circled the planet with hundreds of military bases and began waging wars and destroying any country which disobeyed their dictates. It's crazy how there are guys whose whole entire job is trying to get large numbers of people killed by mass military violence, and we just let that be a thing like it's a perfectly legitimate way for someone to be. Oh, hey, why does that mustache guy keep trying to get large numbers of people violently killed? Oh, he's just one of those war-starty guys. What? Why are there war-starty guys? I don't know. Isn't that normal? I just assumed it was normal to have war-starty guys. Every single soldier who died in Afghanistan died in vain. Don't make up sugary fairy tales about it. Just stop letting it happen. Are soldiers working under the U.S. Empire the worst people in the world? No. But in terms of moral standing, you'd have to rank someone who murders foreigners on behalf of imperialists and war profiteers below most of the people in your average prison. If it wasn't us waging all these wars and killing all those people, it'd be someone else. Sounds very much like the sort of thing an abusive tyrant would say. There's no good reason to respect the analysis of anyone who thinks China's behavior on the world stage is worse than or equally as bad as America's. Australia is the only so-called democracy in the world which has no Bill of Rights of any kind. Most people are unaware of this, including most Australians. What you are seeing in Australia is simply what happens when you add a pandemic response on top of a nation with no foundational legal protection from government overreach. That's why our COVID measures are so notoriously harsh relative to other countries. Modern gods are corporations and banks faceless, inhuman entities whose agendas of growth and conquest supersede even the wishes of their own executives. Our gods are insatiable devourers controlled by no one. Our gods have no heads. At a time when our species is hurtling toward its own demise, we ought to be coming together and working in unison to avert disaster. And it says so much about the power of propaganda that we are instead doing the exact opposite. All of humanity's problems are ultimately due to a misperception of the way things are. 
propaganda causes us to misperceive reality in a way that benefits establishment power structures, so we don't rise up and use the power of our numbers to put an end to the ecocidal, omnicidal status quo which oppresses and exploits us. Advertising causes us to misperceive our own bodies and the source of real contentment, leading to the obsessive consumption habits necessary for turning the gears of capitalism. Ego causes us to misperceive our own minds and the information which enters through the senses, leading to the suffering and dysfunction which ultimately underlies all abuses in our world. What we need, then, is clear seeing, both inwardly and outwardly. An end to government secrecy and the mass-scale manipulations which distort our perception of reality an end to restrictions on psychedelic tools which help people behold their inner processes with lucidity, a greatly elevated prioritization of self-honesty and self-reflection. We can't move toward health until we can see where we are going.